Hi guys, in this video, I wanna talk about TIA, transient ischemic attack. Okay, this is kind of like a, a mini stroke that's temporary that kind of tells you that there's a stroke coming, okay? So it can be resolved within 24 hours. So it's a temporary episode of neurological dysfunction caused by decreased blood flow, okay? Of the brain, spinal cord, or even in the eye. So it's a risk factor for a stroke. Many people that get these, they end up getting a stroke a little bit later. So some of the symptoms for a TIA or stroke would be contralateral paralysis. So if the stroke was on the left side of your brain, you're gonna have problems on the opposite side. That's contralateral. Uh, weakness, numbness, loss of vision, slurred speech, can't comprehend, confusion. Those are the symptoms. And sometimes there's not any symptoms at all. So there are three main mechanisms. Let's start with the first one called an embolus. What's an embolus? Let's just envision you have this uh, placking in the artery, which is composed of cholesterol, calcium, and fibrous tissue, okay? And part of that uh, tissue, that plaque, uh, broke off and then plugged up uh, a vessel somewhere else in your body. That would cause a TIA or a stroke, okay? Number two. A thrombus. A thrombus is just a blood clot, and most thrombuses occur in the atrium of the heart. It's the first chamber of the heart. It's like a primer pump before you get to the ventricle, and uh, that comes from um, atrial fibrillation. Okay, so you have this excessive uh, beating of the heart, and then you get the stagnant blood, and you get pooling, and you get a, a blood clot. Okay, so that's going to block the blood flow to a certain part of your body. Then we have an aneurysm. Okay. And that's like a ballooning effect. If you can imagine blowing up a balloon and then eventually it's gonna pop and you're gonna actually die of internal bleeding. So that can actually happen as well. So now let's uh, talk about what would cause an embolus. Well, I have a lot of videos on that. You have this whole chain of events that occurs and it's not, it's not high cholesterol. That's late in the chain. The first event is low vitamin C because there's an inflammatory condition or the person has high levels of insulin. That's why one of the risk factors of a stroke is becoming a diabetic because the high insulin depletes the vitamin C, starts the lesion in the, uh, the cells and the artery, and there comes the cholesterol, there comes the calcium, there comes the fibrous tissue, and you start building up a clot. So really, this comes from high levels of insulin, it comes from, you know, of course, junk foods, it comes from vitamin C deficiencies. Then we have thrombus, a blood clot. The most common cause is in the uh, atrium of the heart. It's the chamber of the heart. It's like a primer pump. And that, that comes from having atrial fibrillation, which is kind of like an erratic heartbeat to the point where there's pooling involved, and then you get a clot. So the question is, what causes atrial fib? That's a potassium deficiency or a magnesium deficiency. So either you're not consuming seven cups of vegetables to get your potassium or avocados, or you're consuming too much sugar, you're pre-diabetic, you have insulin resistance, and that alone is depleting the potassium and the magnesium. And by the way, when you have insulin resistance, you can't pull in potassium anymore, so you're gonna be deficient. So you have to fix insulin resistance. Okay, so that's one thing. Aneurysm, what causes an aneurysm? the lining on the vascular system starts becoming deficient in oxygen, either because the person has high blood pressure and that blood pressure is causing damage on the arteries, causing atrophy of the artery, causing it to balloon out from the high blood pressure. And we know insulin resistance causes high blood pressure and so does the potassium deficiency. But you can also have smoking, which will decrease oxygen in the, in the vascular system. Uh, you can have placking on the arteries that damages the lining of the arteries to cause the same mechanism. You have low oxygen, atrophy of the blood vessel, ballooning effect. Then you can have insulin resistance, which causes inflammation, which decreases oxygen, creates atrophy of the vessel, and it starts to enlarge. And the last thing would be vitamin C deficiency, which controls the collagen. So if you're lacking vitamin C, your arteries get weaker. Okay? So if if you want to prevent a TIA or a stroke, let's take a look. We need vitamin C. We need to fix insulin resistance. I'll put a link down below. A lot of vegetables, high vitamin C. We need to have a lot of potassium, magnesium. It's in the vegetables. We need to decrease the blood pressure naturally using techniques for insulin resistance, intermittent fasting. We need to stop smoking. 
And um, if you already have a TIA or a stroke, what do you do? There's some things you can do that actually are helpful. There's a natural uh, healthy fat called DHA. Okay, I would, if I had a stroke, I'd be consuming this by the bucketfuls because this healthy fat has been shown to improve brain damage. Okay, number one, it increases oxygen to the brain. Next thing, niacinamide, that's vitamin B3. Here's another natural remedy of vitamin B3 that has been shown to regrow synapses and regenerate brain cells. Intermittent fasting with keto has been known to increase and regenerate brain cells. So these are the three things that I would do if I had this problem. All right, put your comments below. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below.